Hello children, I hope you all are doing well. I welcome you all to this fourth video of the chapter Force and Pressure. I hope you must have thoroughly gone through the previous videos of this chapter. Let us first recall what we have learnt in the previous video. In our previous video, we learnt about pressure. We learnt that pressure is defined as the total normal force acting per unit area of a surface. We also learnt that pressure increases with force and decreases with the area of the surface over which the force acts. We learnt that pressure is directly proportional to the magnitude of the normal force and inversely proportional to the surface area over which the force acts. We learned that pressure has only magnitude and it does not have the direction. And we learned that the commonly used unit of pressure is Newton per meter square, which we also called as Pascal. Well, today we shall learn about the pressure exerted by liquids. The question is, do the liquids also exert pressure? Let us find out by doing some activities whether liquids exert pressure or not. If they exert pressure, how do they exert and in what directions? We all can understand that liquid exerts a force on the bottom of a container in which it is kept. It also exerts some force on the sides of the container. This force will always be perpendicular to the surface of the container. Let us look at this diagram. As you know that pressure exerted by a liquid on a surface is given by the ratio between the total normal force acting on the surface and the area over which the force is acting. Now, let us consider an object suspended inside a liquid as shown in this picture. Let us explore in what directions force is acting on this object. There are four faces that are in contact with the liquid, the top surface, the bottom surface and the two lateral surfaces. The liquid exerts a force on each of these surfaces and the force will be at right angles to the surface. Therefore, liquids exert pressure on all the surfaces that are in contact with it. Let us explore this through some activities. In this activity, I have taken three long tubes which are of equal length. To the bottom of the tubes which are open ended, I have attached three balloons. Now, I will pour some liquid, let us say water through these tubes so that they fall into the balloon. Let us see what happens. On observing, we find that the tube through which we have poured less water has been able to inflate the balloon less. So, the tube through which more water has been put, the balloon has expanded more. Why did this happen? This activity shows that liquids exert pressure on the bottom of the containing vessel. Now, the question is, do the liquids exert pressure only at the bottom or do they exert pressure on the sides of the vessel too? If the previous activity which we did is done with the holes which is there on the side of the tube and a balloon attached to it, what will be our observation? Will the balloon expand due to water? So, I have taken another container with a small side tube near the bottom. I have tied a small balloon to the side of the tube. 
Now I pour water into this container. Let us watch what happens to the size of the balloon. So the balloon swells as we put more and more water in the container. Similar effect can be seen even if we try different liquids. You all must have seen water gushing out through broken pipes or the pipes where there is a small hole or when the gates of the dam are pulled up. The water really comes out with a great pressure. Also you must have seen in the farms, farmers using sprinklers for cultivation. The sprinklers help the water move to a great distance in the field. Why does this happen? The sprinkling of water is due to the pressure which is exerted by water on the walls of the pipe. So from all these activities we can tell that liquids also exert pressure on the sides of the containers in which they are. Now let me do another activity for you. I have a container. In the container I have drilled some holes which are at different heights from the base of the container. Now I fill the container with water. What do you observe? Do the streams of water coming out of the holes fall at the same distance from the bottle? Through which of the holes the stream is moving the smallest distance? Through which hole the stream of the water is moving the longest distance? Of course horizontally. And what does it indicate? This activity shows that the pressure which is acting on this liquid at different depths is different. It is more at the bottom and it is less as we move away from the bottom. That is why we see the liquid which is coming out from the bottom is moving or is falling at a greater distance horizontally. So we can conclude that pressure exerted by liquids increases with depth. Have you ever visited a dam? If yes, then it's good. You must have observed how a dam is constructed. If you have not visited a dam, here's a picture for you. Look at the picture carefully. You will find that the construction of the dam is in such a way that the bottom of the dam is broader than the top. Can you think why is it done so? By now you must be able to explain that why dams are given such structures. So let us try to explain. What happens here is that the pressure exerted by water is higher at the bottom than at the top. That is why it is important to build the dam stronger at the bottom. Now let us consider another question. We have discussed how pressure varies with depth. But what about pressure exerted by a liquid at the same level? This also we shall try to understand with a small activity. Here is an empty plastic bottle. I have made four holes of same size all around near the bottom of the bottle. All the holes are at the same height. Now let us fill this bottle with water while keeping the bottle on a plate. When we fill water in this bottle, the streams of water will come out through the four holes. If we carefully observe and compare the strengths of the stream which are coming out of the four holes, we will see that all of the streams move the same distance. What does this show? This shows that the pressure exerted by liquid at a given depth is equal in all directions. 
Now, let us summarize all the points which we have learnt in this video. We learnt that liquid exerts force and hence pressure on all surfaces in contact with it. Liquids exert pressure on the bottom of the containing vessel. We learnt that liquids exert pressure on the side walls of the container. We also learnt the pressure exerted by liquids increase with the depth of the liquid. And we also learnt that pressure exerted by a liquid at a given depth is equal in all directions. So, we learnt about the pressure exerted by liquids. Then a question naturally follows. Do gases also exert pressure? Well, this question will be taking up in our next video. Till then, you all go through this chapter very thoroughly and try to explore more things about pressure. Until then, I wish you all a very good health and keep learning. Thank you.